Uh, so first of all, I'd like to start with a quick survey. How many Android developers do we have in the room? Please raise your hands. Oh, great. Uh, how many of you have worked with gRPC or used gRPC in their Android projects? Ah, not so many. All right. Uh, so I'm not here to evangelize gRPC, rest assured. I will not tell you to drop the REST or RESTish API you have. You will judge by yourself. I have far more important agenda for you. I'm here to announce that we are hiring people, uh, Android developers, uh, web developers, uh, backend developers. So um, we have a stand down there. Uh, come check us out, talk to us. We'd be happy to chat with you. <coughs> That's it for me. Thank you guys for listening. If you have any questions, I'm ready to take them. OK, nothing. I expected that, and that's why I came with uh, some questions of mine, actually. Uh, the first one, I was asking myself when I started working in this, on this presentation, I was like, how did I hear first about gRPC? And um, to answer that, I'd like to go back in time a little bit. Back in 2016, at the company I'm working at, uh, we were going under some deep restructuring. Uh, we were switching and shifting from a classical organization to a product teams one. Uh, so teams were becoming more decentralized, uh, more independent in their technical choices, more autonomous. So our good old monolith system also had to follow the same trend. So we started splitting it into multiple smaller microservices. Microservices that were written in various languages. We had Go, Python, C Sharp, sometimes Java. Uh, and the question we were asking ourselves is, how would we make all these microservices that were built in various uh, languages and various technologies to communicate with each other? And that's where gRPC came for the rescue. So gRPC supports all these languages we had. Uh, in fact, it supports all, um, it supports around 10 languages. So if you are an Android developer using Flutter, we've got you covered because gRPC also supports um, Dart language. Okay, so this is how I started hearing about gRPC. Uh, I was hearing about gRPC everywhere uh, on my open space, but I wasn't involved in any uh, project working with uh, gRPC. It was mainly in the backend code. So I kept asking myself, what is really gRPC? Uh, and the answer I found is that it's an RPC framework. Great. It doesn't help a lot. Uh, I heard also that it was built by Google and it was used internally. Um, and then back in 2015, they open sourced it. I also learned that gRPC was built on top of OKHttp, OK which means that we can use and profit from HTTP2 and all the advantages of HTTP2, like multiplexing and so on. That's a cool thing, but still, it wasn't clear. So what is really RPC? What does it stand for? An RPC is remote procedure call. Um, if the name does sound barbaric, that's because it's coming from the 60s. Um, and the first implementations dates back to the 80s, and Xerox was the first one to credit it with the first implementations. Uh, Xerox was a great company in the 80s. What happened? Um, and then we started working with um, object-oriented languages, and then we shifted to a newer paradigm. Uh, remote method invocation. If you are as old as me, uh, you must have heard or worked with Java RMI, Corba, anyone? A long time. <laughs> okay, so all these concepts actually are related to something, uh, some specific field, which is distributed computing. And to put it simply, I'd say distributed computing is the art uh, of making code written in various languages, various technologies, code that is hosted in several locations, communicate between each other in a seamless way. So, from an Android perspective, from a client perspective, a mobile perspective, what does it mean? Like, you can think of it as a different way of communicating between an app and a server, and that's not something new. That we, all, most of the apps we have today do that. Um, 
in fact, like the most um, uh, likely solution you have today in your application is that you have something like an HTTP API, a REST API, uh, using HTTP verbs, methods, get, post, update, and so on. And on your client side, you might have something like retrofit, um, OK HTTP, or God forbid, uh, volley, or async tasks. Um, so yeah, that's a way of communicating and making calls uh, to your API. And you can think of gRPC, uh, something like that. OK. Um, did I break the ice here? Do we have any questions? Not yet. So I can carry on. I have another one. Uh, so great, it's like, Mm, doing networking, but then how do I interact with uh, gRPC? So remember, in gRPC, we have something like RPC. Uh, so it is based on method calling. So basically what you do is just you call a method. A method like the ones you will have locally uh, with parameters, return types, and so on. So that's it, easy, method calling. But what is it? like? Why this method is special? Actually, this method, however it looks like something you can have uh, locally, uh, this method actually, it will be executed remotely. Uh, and also, it will abstract all the networking boilerplate, uh, all the HTTP logic, so no more annotations, get, post. No more, oh, god, god damn it, which path am I going to use with this URL? Or um, what else? Um, oh, should I add a slash at the end of my endpoint or not? So you won't have to ask yourself any of these questions. And also what I like about calling methods is when you write them correctly, methods are verbose. They are self-explanatory. Uh, methods can actually can explain and describe uh, what they will be doing, the operations they will be executing. So for example, uh, if you want to get some information about a member, you will just call a method called getMember. And this will be translated as a, a get call to the member endpoint, and then you add on the path 007. And for example, MI6, when they hired James Bond, uh, they signed him up, so sign up method. And then that would be translated as a post call to the member endpoint. So great. Um, now we've seen that gRPC, how to communicate, how does gRPC operate? Uh, just easy. We just have to call a method. But where does that method come from? Like, where can I find it? Well, that's a great question also. Thank you, guys. Uh, well actually, uh, the most important part when we are working with gRPC is the proto file. It's where you define all your services. Um, you can think of protofile as a, a contract that will enforce uh, the communication between your app and the server. Um, so what do we find in this protofile? You will have all your methods they will be using. You will have all of your models that you will be needing. Or as proto protocol buffers like to call them messages and services. So you can also think of protocol buffers as something like XML or JSON uh, from a ser serializing point of view. And then you compile this proto file, and it will generate some code in your preferred language, in the language of your platform, the language of your choice. So in our case, on Android, uh, you will have some Java classes with accessors. Uh, you will have also some util methods uh, for serialization. And most importantly, you will have RPC methods. Uh, those methods, as I said before, they will abstract away all the um, networking boiler boilerplate. Um, OK, so I'd like to go back on the serializing part. Um, so does protocol buffers, are protocol buffers the only thing we can use with uh, gRPC or are there some other alternatives? And the answer is yes, there are some alternatives. Actually, you can even use JSON with gRPC, um, which is not the point, and I'll tell you why uh, later. 
Um, e there are also some other alternatives uh, that are independent from Google. Um, I know about um, Wire that has been developed by um, Square. Uh, great job, Square. Um, but the problem with Wire is that they are only used with Java and Android, and they don't target the other languages supported by gRPC. So protocol buffers are the default uh, uh, serializing format on gRPC. So they are the preferred serializing format when we are using gRPC. Uh, and that for various reasons. Um, first, you can, uh, as you have seen before, uh, the data structure on um, protocol buffers is hard typed. So no more JSON, no more serializing problems, no more um, typos, um, no more a oh, lot of things. So the second part also is that these protocol buffers are in a binary format, uh, which means that they are not like JSON, which is in a, uh, a text-based format. Text-based format, they can be very uh, human-friendly, they are, they are human-readable, but they are not that friendly with the machine, because each time we are using uh, JSON, we have to do some extra processing uh, serializing, uh, deserializing, and that is very costly and that is um, very expensive. And in fact, thanks to this binary format, uh, uh, protocol buffers can get a lot more smaller and a lot more faster to transport. Um, in fact, uh, you can go to five times uh, faster with a gRPC call using uh, protocol buffers. Okay, um, so I must warn you, this is, we have seen a lot of advantages, but uh, not everything pink. It's not la vie en rose. It's, uh, uh, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. We can have some problems. And that's why I ask myself, like, what are the problems I encountered when I was working with uh, gRPC? And I also must warn you, this is my last question. Uh, I hope uh, we break the ice and I'll get some questions uh, in return. <laughs> uh, so here it goes. Uh, are there any downsides to gRPC? And in fact, yeah, there is some uh, possible enhancements we can have. Um, first and foremost, debugging. Uh, when you are using gRPC, it's not like when you are working with an HTTP API where you just fire Postman and then you call your endpoint and you start seeing your beautiful JSON and see what's going on and what's wrong and what is, where it is uh, crashing. Uh, in gRPC, it's much more complicated. We don't have many tools like that, uh, let alone tools that are human-readable and human-friendly, like graphical. Uh, there have been some attempts, but they didn't get like much attention. They didn't get very popular. Uh, so the only tool that I have retained is gRP curl, which is kind of a um, a tool set uh, where you can have uh, several command lines uh, and that can come in handy when debugging. Second pain point I encountered is uh, the first time setup. Actually, when you uh, set up a gRPC for the first time on Android, it can be very tedious and uh, it's very expensive. Like. Uh, you have to make sure that all of your builds are running correctly. You have to make sure that you are having all the right dependencies. So in my experience, it was um, very time consuming and very expensive. Uh, but on the other hand, it's a one time thing. You do it only once and then you're free. You can make whatever networking call you want. So that's a good thing. So here are, for example, some of the, some of the steps I went through. Uh, first, I had to add um, the uh, protobuf uh, Gradle plugin. Uh, and this protobuf Gradle plugin, you have to add it like, and apply it right after the uh, application plugin or the Java plugin, and not before, go figure. 
And then you have to add the dependency to the compiler uh, and make sure to, ha to add the right one. Uh, so, Protoc. And then you have to add another dependency for code generation. Uh, and you have to add the right one. So, in my case, I use Java Lite, which is the uh, plugin that is recommended for Android. Uh, my advice, use Java, ja Java Lite for every Java project. Uh, the main difference between the regular one and the light one is that in the regular one, you will have uh, some more modules related to reflection, for example. Who wants that? Um, but like, uh, yeah, uh, go with Java Lite unless you will need some other modules in the regular uh, Java plugin and then switch to it. And then, to make your code generation work, you have to um, configure uh, some tasks, some Gradle tasks, generate proto task, and otherwise it won't work. Um, so yeah, these are the all steps I went ahead. It may seem easy, but actually, like in the beginning, it's not like very clear, and that's because of um, some lag in the documentation, I would say. I don't know what is it with Google, but they have great products and great technologies, uh, great projects, but each time the documentation is not quite there yet. Uh, it reminded me a lot of Volley. Uh, and then when you have no documentation, you just go to your significant other or Stack Overflow. Uh, so yeah, with the, uh, with the hope of finding some code to copy and paste. Don't do that. Um, so yeah, even on Stack Overflow, you don't have much uh, reaction. The community is still young. Uh, like uh, you have a lot of questions, people asking the same questions as you are, but like not no no answers at all, or like small answers that doesn't answer your question. So yeah, that was terrible also. And in my opinion, that's because this uh, choice is not very popular. Um, it's not the go-to solution when you are thinking about, uh, about um, networking. Um, so even in my company, we still have, like, for example, uh, we still build uh, REST APIs on top of um, gRPC microservices in order to uh, expose them to all the, uh, the um, front-end developers, I'd say, so for mobile developers and web developers. And yeah, there is like, um, a lot of road ahead of us, uh, a lot of education to do as well. Um, to like uh, grow and start using uh, automatically uh, gRPC. So yeah, that's it for me, guys. Thank you uh, for listening. Uh, and as I said, like only one slide. I'll go back to it. <laughs> Thank you.